Hello. Welcome back. Okay, so this is the rest of chapter 8. Now, do understand, when I first started teaching, we used to put chapter 2 and chapter 8 together as one big chapter. So I, I found over the years it was better to take that chapter and break it up because there's so many different types of calculations in it. So we're just going to focus on what's called the mole concept and why the unit for the mole is the counting unit in chemistry and how that relates to your periodic table. So again, make sure that you have your periodic table out so you can follow along with the calculations. In fact, I should get my periodic table. All right, got it out here, ready to go. So the section starts off with, let's see what we got here. Did all this, we did all this, here we go, the AMU. What is the atomic mass unit? Okay, do understand that the mass of a real hydrogen atom uh, is equal to 1.67, I don't know if that's correct, I think that's correct, times 10 to the minus 24 grams. So in other words, it's 0.000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
Avocado is associated with the guacamole. Uh, okay, that's a stupid joke. Anyway, moving on. So, why that number? How did that number come about? I'll show you. Alright, we already said that one hydrogen atom has a mass of a 1 AMU, and 1 AMU is the actual mass of the hydrogen atom, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. So, if we take that value and we convert it, and we say, all right, every one hydrogen atom, first of all, a mole is 602.2 sectrillion atoms. If we say for every one hydrogen atom, it's 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24 grams, then we get a value of 1.01 grams of hydrogen. So if you look on your periodic table to three sig figs, it should be 1.01 grams. You might have on a table with four sig figs, 1.008. But if you change that to three sig figs, that would round up to be 1.01 grams. So in other words, the Avogadro number, if you take that number and multiply it by the actual mass of the particle, you get the masses that are on your periodic table. Now, why a mole? Again, we don't have a molometer in the lab. All we have is a scale. So if we weigh out one gram of hydrogen, we have one mole of atoms. It's sort of like dealing with paper. Paper comes in reams of 500 sheets. And let's say each ream weighs a pound and we need to get 50,000 pages of paper. We're not gonna open up each package and count out 50,000 papers. If 500 papers weighs a pound and we need to get 50,000 pieces of paper, we could just do this calculation. We know that every ream has 500 papers and it weighs one pound. So we can go to our scale and we just cancel out the zeros here um, and then divide by 500, that will be easy. And we know that we have to weigh out 100 pounds of paper in order to get those 50,000 sheets. And that's a lot easier to do than to count the 50,000 sheets of paper. So that mole is useful for only three things, atoms, molecules, formula units. We can't count them, but we can weigh them, and based upon their weight, we can know how many particles we have. Okay, so I always say that 1 AMU equals, if we do the conversion, 1 gram per mole. However, we've got to be careful. 1 AMU describes one particle at a time, and a gram per mole represents Avogadro's number of particles. So they're really not the same. I don't get into making the distinction between the two things. As far as I'm concerned, I use them interchangeably. But some teachers, make sure you ask your recitation teacher if they are a little, um, they want you to understand the difference between the AMU and grams per mole. But like I said, I, I tend to use them interchangeably. All right, so how big is a mole? All right, if the world population is six billion, you can see that the mole is many, many, many times that world population. So we don't use moles to describe how many people there are in the world. Here's some fun facts about the mole. Uh, if we took cans of soda and we covered the earth with it, then a mole of soda cans would cover the earth 200 miles deep. If we had unpopped popcorn and we spread them out across the United States, then the, a mole of popcorn kernels would cover the United States to a depth of nine miles deep. So you can imagine how much popcorn, uh, pop popcorn would cover. And if we were able to count at the rate of 10 million per second, it would still take us two billion years to count to one mole. <coughs> so again, we don't have a molometer in the lab. We only have a scale. So it makes more sense to weigh things out and then calculate how many particles you have. All right, so then they introduce the concept of molar mass and formula mass. Now, molar mass, oh my goodness, molar mass is when you take all of the masses on the periodic table for that molecule and you add them up. So for instance, if we were to look up the mass of water, we would take two times the mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008 grams per mole, and then we're gonna add it to the mass of one oxygen atom, which is 
15.99 grams per mole and we get 18.015 grams per mole so if we went to a balance and we took a beaker and we poured in 18.015 grams of water we would have 602 sectrillion particles sextillion i'm sorry so again a mole seems like this huge number but when it comes to what it actually represents in terms of physical mass it really is actually a small amount so water molecules when we say something is a molecule it means it can exist by itself so these things tend to be covalent compounds but they also want you to figure out formula mass now formula mass is when we're dealing with an ionic compound and these ionic compounds tend to form crystals in other words if we have a sodium particle and a chloride particle they're not going to exist by themselves the sodium is going to attract other chlorides and they start to create a network of sodium chlorides where the positives and the negatives are attracted to each other and we call this structure a crystal lattice but if you look at the crystal lattice what if we break this down to the simplest repeating unit what all crystals of salt share is that for every one sodium there's one chlorine so we would call this a formula unit okay and then the mass of that formula unit we could look up sodium and we could look up chlorine so chlorine is 35.453 oop I forgot to hit the decimal point and we're going to add that to the mass of sodium when we look that up we get 22.990 and so the formula mass the formula mass for sodium chloride is 58.443 now if we were to write AMU for the unit that means we're talking about the mass of one unit of sodium chloride if we were to write grams per mole that means we're talking about again 602.2 sectillion units of sodium chloride so there really is no difference between calculating formula mass and molar mass you look up the masses you do your atom inventory and then you add the masses together so again we're going to give you a formula you do an atom inventory and then you multiply each atom by its mass and then you add them together so let's do one All right, so suppose we have to look up the mass of uh, magnesium chlorate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the mass of magnesium. I have one atom of magnesium, and I'm gonna multiply that by the mass, which is uh, 24.305, if you look that up on your periodic table. So we'll write AMU here, because that's the mass of one atom. Chlorine, however, we're going to multiply by 2 because there's two chlorine atoms in that formula, and that's 35.453 when we look up that mass. And then for oxygen, we got 2 times 3 oxygen, so 6 oxygens, 15.999 AMU. All right, so now we're going to add everything up, and then we're going to apply sig figs. So we get 70.906 for the chlorine. And then 15.999 times 6, 95.994 for the oxygens. And now let's add this thing together. Now this test is not until Wednesday, but you're probably thinking, hey, put a whole bunch of these on the test, Mr. Burnett. Because they're easy all right so we just find the masses and we add them up and we apply sig fig so all of these go down to the thousandth column so my final answer goes down to the thousandth column because that's the rule for adding when it comes to sig figs 
Now, could you write 191.205 grams per mole? Yeah, you could, absolutely. And that is the quick introduction to the mole concept. So in the next video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do conversions involving moles in the periodic table. So I'll see you on the next video.